All right, good evening. We are going to go ahead and get started here. And so if everybody can grab a seat, we'll get a, take a few minutes to get settled. It's good to see everybody. I appreciate you coming out, spending some time with us this evening to <clears throat> go over the budget overview and to get some information about the upcoming fiscal year budget and the process that we're undertaking to get that adopted uh, so that we can have a new budget starting on the fiscal year start of October the 1st. My name is Mark McAvoy. I'm the Director of Planning and Data Analytics, uh, which is the department that houses the office of uh, folks that develop and manage the budget process. And so I'm going to walk you through this overview this evening. Um, and I anticipate having plenty of time to interact and answer questions. And so as we go through, if you think of a question, uh, feel free to let us know. But we will have plenty of time at the end for questions and answers. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we are slated for an hour. And we have, I think, enough material to get us through that time. But it may not take that amount of time. So we'll just see how it goes. Um, I want to recognize a few city staff members that are here just so you kind of get oriented. And I see that uh, one of our assistant city managers, uh, Dana Bergdorf, has joined us. Dana's right here. We have our chief financial officer, Reggie Zeno, here. We've got our director of communications, Michelle Goot, and then several members of the budget staff, starting with Jennifer Snyder, who helped coordinate all of this. And so I'm really appreciative of Jen's efforts. Back here, we have Pam Kakmarinski, who's one of our budget managers. And then next to Michelle, we have Lorraine Coleman, another budget manager. So this is primarily the team that's working to help get this budget delivered so that it can be adopted and ready to go on October the 1st. So really what our goals are for this evening are to share information with you, to talk about what goes into making the budget, what goes into uh, getting a budget developed and ready to be adoptable by city council. And this year, it is scheduled to go before council on September 21st to be adopted. There's a lot of stuff that's going to happen between now and September 21st, but that's right now the scheduled adoption date. We're going to discuss some budget uh, philosophies, how we get to where we are, what kind of things we look at and consider as we develop the budget. Ultimately, when it's adopted, what went into that? We're going to, again, discuss the budget process and talk about how all of this is put together um, and, and how we get from the beginning of the year to here. And then uh, discussing some context for the upcoming fiscal year budget. We are presently in fiscal year 2021, which will end on September 30th. And then on October the 1st, fiscal year 2022 will begin. And that is the budget that we are currently developing, the fiscal 2022 budget. So one of the things that I want to uh, point out and start out with a little context, the city is a, a very large enterprise. Think of it like many other large enterprises. We have various different kinds of business lines that make up the entire organization. And some of those are in what we call enterprise funds. They're, they're self-contained business enterprises. And as you can see there on, on the screen, some of those are our regional uh, water and sewer utility, we have uh, golf operations, we have a stormwater utility, we have parking facilities, and, and a bunch of other things that are both on this list and not on this list that make up a whole swath of business enterprises that are doing uh, business, they're, they're collecting revenue and providing services uh, in a self-contained way. They are not competing for general fund revenues. And so that's what makes these a little bit different than our general governmental funds, right? The, the lines of business that are in our general fund are most uh, commonly referred to by their department titles, which you can see here. There's a lot of them. You know, we have park and rec. We have libraries. We have all of these other uh, development services departments, neighborhood services. We have an administrative a function that supports all of that and the other enterprises that we just talked about. And so all of those things are made up of employees and, and service providers that are in the general fund. So we've got a group of enterprise funds and we have essentially the general fund lines of business. And 
and there are other funds in, in the city as well, but, but generally speaking, what we're going to be talking about tonight is the general fund, that list of lines of businesses that we just went over here. For all funds, the fiscal year 2021 budget that we are presently in, that will end on September 30th of this year, altogether is about $1.7 billion, so a very large enterprise, $1.7 billion. That is both on the revenue and the expenditure side. We, we tend to, to balance those out. So we've got $1.7 billion coming in as revenue, and we've got $1.7 billion going out as expenditure. When we look at how that breaks down in fiscal 21, all of these charts are going to show you fiscal 21 uh, because we're still developing the fiscal 22 budget. In fiscal 21, as that 1.7 billion breaks down, you'll see that the, the vast majority or the majority of it is in the general and the enterprise funds that we just talked about. About 75% of it is in those two areas. And then we've got some other things that help support those businesses. We've got some special revenue funds. CCPD is one of those special revenue funds, the Crime Control and Prevention District, and there are some others in there. We've got the internal service funds. Those are things that uh, tend to serve the, the business of providing services and are contained within and have some special purposes. Those are another 9%. And then our debt service funds are uh, the remaining 7%. And what the debt service funds do are they pay all of the debt service on the outstanding debt that goes into uh, building infrastructure and maintaining infrastructure. So that's kind of how that all funds uh, fiscal 21 budget of 1.7 billion breaks down. As we look at just the general fund portion of that, that 41%, that 718 million piece of the pie there, for fiscal 21, like we said, it's about $718 million. And how that breaks down on the revenue side, you can see there that the two largest pieces which make up about 78% are property taxes and sales taxes. So those two together, 397 million and 168 million respectively, make up three quarters essentially of the general fund revenue budget. And then as you go around the pie, we have other taxes. Those are things like franchise fees that we get from you know, electric utilities and, and uh, gas utilities and those kinds of things. Uh, we have transfers in. Those are coming from other funds to help support the operation of the business. We have charges for services. Those are things like park rental fees and library fees and those kinds of things. We have licenses and permits. Think of building permits and health-related permits, all of those kinds of things. And then on down, uh, some smaller revenue streams, fines and forfeitures, the other category, and then intergovernmental. Altogether, $718 million in the general fund. On the expense side, you see the same figure. Again, we have a balanced uh, budget, same amount of revenue as expenditure. And as you can see here, we have these broken down by uh, service line or, or, or business line, so essentially by department. And you can see there on the expense side, by far the largest chunk of that is going to public safety, 24% to fire, 38% to police, so 62% for those two components. And then everything else makes up the rest with park and rec and transportation and public works making up the next two largest pieces with economic development, code compliance, library, and on around. And several of them aren't even labeled on there uh, there, there are so many, and they have a, a fairly uh, small sliver of that of that seven hundred and eighteen million dollar pie. But altogether, those are the business lines that are making up the general fund and providing a variety of services that uh, residents and visitors of Fort Worth engage with on a daily basis. So, getting into some specifics of budget policies and, and philosophies. And, and I guess before I, I start going in here, I wanna pause a second and ask if anyone has any questions related to the uh, two budget pie charts that we just looked at, the all funds and the general fund. We good to proceed? Okay. 
So if we're looking at some budget philosophies and, and policies, I mean, these are just some general things to keep in mind. Like, like any business enterprise, we want to take a, a long-range look at things. We, we don't want to look, we, we do want to look at this year, but we want to look at this year in the context of a wider picture. What, what's out on the horizon? What do we need to be aware of coming at us in the future? We want to maintain or reduce the property tax rate. We'll talk more about that as we go through the presentation. Currently, the property tax rate for the city is 0.7475. Um, and we'll get into some, some charts that kind of break that down as we go through. We want to maintain our infrastructure and we want to invest in new infrastructure. That's a priority. That's one of our leading strategic philosophies here. We don't want to dip into reserves to pay for ongoing operations. We have reserves to make sure that if something happens, we are able to continue to operate if for some reason those revenue streams that we talked about earlier start getting uh, tightened or, or lessened. And so we don't want to use reserves for ongoing operations. Our capital program drives the operating budget. This is really not different from any other municipality. As we build things and put them in place, it costs us to operate and maintain them. Think of a new library. There are staff that are there. There are people that are doing uh, yard work associated with the landscape. There are people doing custodial things. There are people managing parking, all of those things. And so capital investment produces operating costs that we have to keep track of and keep up with. We want to make data-driven decisions. We don't want to necessarily make gut decisions. It, I, I think this, so I'm going to make the decision. We want to have empirical evidence that we're using to make decisions so that those decisions result in the best possible outcomes. Uh, this is general fund focused, but in the general fund, everything competes with everything else. You've got, you remember that pie, you've got that fixed amount of money and those lines of businesses are all competing with each other for that fixed amount. Now, $718 million in fiscal 21, is a, it's a lot of money, but still, that lot of money is finite and those lines of businesses are competing with each other for each of those dollars. To that point, resources are finite, that's across the board. And then our last one is there are cho choices and trade-offs. So if we fund uh, the fire department at a higher level, that funding has to be offset somewhere else if there's no additional revenue coming in to pay for whatever that is that we're funding and vice versa. If we choose to elevate the funding for the library, that funding has to be offset from somewhere else. So each February, we uh, have a city council planning, strategic planning retreat. We had one this past February, and that gives city council the opportunity to kind of look at what the forecast, financial forecasts are, and, and how they are going to strategically plan for the upcoming budget year as we move into the budget development process, which typically kicks off right after the city council retreat. And so we present a long-term outlook for the budget, like I just mentioned, and, and a lot of the information that we're gonna talk about after this slide comes from that uh, city council retreat and the information that we presented to city council at that time. What we need to do is we need to understand future commitments. What decisions have we made now or in the recent past that are gonna require us to invest or to fund certain programs in the upcoming fiscal year. We're gonna have some preliminary budget discussions. What does a general fund look like? What, what does the economy tell us about what's coming in the near future? Are the property values gonna increase, decrease, stay the same? Do we think sales tax is gonna increase, decrease? If you remember, those are the two large pieces of pie. So those are the main ones that we're watching, but we're watching all of the other ones too. CCPD fund forecast heavily tied to sales tax. And then in this year in particular, we were in the midst of a, a legislative uh, session in, in, the, in the Texas legislature. What is the legislature going to do that may or, or may not impact any of those lines of business in the general fund or any of those other funds that we need to be aware of that may put mandates on us that require budget to support? And then allocation of federal relief dollars. We 
have in the last several years had access to some federal dollars that we have not been accustomed to with both the CARES and now the American Rescue Plan uh, dollars that have come as a result of, of COVID and the resulting federal actions that have occurred. So I, I mentioned before that we were gonna talk about tax rate allocations. Here's a, a graph that kind of shows the distribution of those allocations over the last several fiscal years. And if you look at the top of that, and I realize this is a little bit hard to see, but these presentations will be posted on the city's website, so you can get in here and you can, you can see these um, and spend as much time as you'd like looking at these once we get those posted. As you can see, going back to 2012, we had uh, essentially two distributions of the property tax rate, one going to operations and maintenance, which is what the O&M stands for, and the other going to debt. And that's typically how most cities distribute their property tax allocation. And as you can see in 2012, it was 85.5 cents. And what that means is that when you get your valuations, uh, in your property valuations, 85.5 cents per $100 of valuation is what turns into your property tax bill. And that's the city's portion of the bill. There is also a county portion and a, usually a school district portion and maybe some special district portions. But then as you go from left to right, from 2012 out to 2021, which is the current fiscal year that we're in, you can see that that total tax rate is coming down. And it starts to come down in 2017, and it comes down to its current level or current rate of 74, 75 in 2021. And going back to that uh, goal or philosophy slide that we just covered, our expectation is that rate will stay the same in fiscal 22. But as you can see there, in 2015, a third allocation shows up, and that PAYG uh, stands for PAYGO, and that's basically a, a, an acronym for pay as you go. So we're, we're paying for something as we go along. So that's essentially our cash contribution to capital maintenance. And city council at that time made a decision that we needed to be paying cash for capital maintenance. And so you see this show up in 2015 at 3.8 cents per hundred, which is part of that whole allocation. And again, going from left to right, it winds up at six and a half cents, which is its current level today. So essentially what that means is six and a half cents of the 74.75 cents of your tax rate is going into the maintenance of infrastructure. And you'll, I'll show you a list uh, downstream in the presentation to give you an idea of some of the itemized things that that six and a half cents goes to maintain, specific things. But you can also see there that there's an uh, indication of a 2014 bond referenda at 292 million and a 2018 referenda at almost 400 million. So when you infuse debt into the picture, you can see that as you go from left to right, 2012 to 2021, the rate is actually coming down, but we are able to fund those bond programs largely because the value of properties is, is increasing. And so we're able to provide those uh, bond referendas with no increase, in fact, a decrease to the overall tax rate that you can see there. Are, are there any questions about the tax rate before we move on? Yes. So there's a, you know, that's a significant decrease over those number of years. And so largely due to the fact that there was a, 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 a deliberate effort to decrease the tax rate um, so that as property values accelerated, uh, the operations of the city were still being covered, but not putting that entire burden or that same level of burden on property owners. So the rate's coming down, but the revenues 
are tied to valuation changes. And so the, the revenue was stable because of the valuation changes primarily. I've got a microphone. We're going to use the microphone so that it's picked up on the tape. Sorry. I'll just repeat the question for the for the record. So there's a question about why the city's property tax rate has decreased significantly since uh, 2016. And as Mark mentioned, it was a deliberate effort. But to give that some context, the city of Fort Worth's property tax rate was the highest in Texas. So it hurts our ability to attract uh, businesses and families when they're having to pay such a high property tax rate. And so that was an effort to, to reduce that. We're no longer number one. I think we may be three or four, something like that. That's right. And that's excellent context. That's, that's absolutely correct. So we were the highest. We are no longer the highest. Um, but that was, a, that was a conscious effort on behalf of city council to make sure that our, our tax rate was coming down. So we talked about, uh, we, we saw this in, in a graph that we just got off of. This is kind of how, in, in looking at it more of in a flow chart style, of how that 74-75 breaks out. You see the first uh, break is between O&M and debt. And if you're looking at um, the state language, that debt portion is called interest and in sinking. So if you see INS, that's what that means, it's debt. O and M and INS. So the, the operations and maintenance rate is 59.50, the debt rate is 15.25, and then O and M is further distributed between operations and what we just talked about, the capital maintenance, what we call pay go or pay as you go at six and a half cents. So that's the distribution of the property tax rate allocation in fiscal 21, the, the fiscal year that we're presently in. And this is one of those graphs that we provided to city council during the retreat in February that I mentioned earlier. This is property tax revenue over multiple years going back to 2006. This is for the general and debt service funds. And as you can see, to help answer the question that we just had, as you can see, the, the, the change uh, in revenues going from left to right from 2006 to the current fiscal year that we're in, which is the dark blue bar, fiscal 2021, you can see with the exception of 2011, we're seeing increases. And the 10-year average increase is 4.5%, five-year 7%, three-year 7.8%, right? Now, if you look to the bar immediately to the right of 21, you see that negative number, that red number. That's this coming fiscal year, the year that we're preparing to enter and developing the budget for. We initially forecasted a reduction in property values in the aggregate. Right? This is the aggregate over the whole city, residential, commercial, industrial, all, all together. Forecasting a modest decline in the overall property value. And then we're expecting it to pick up again in fiscal 23 and going forward. Now, we've since uh, had some indication that that may not be the case. We, we may not see a decline, but we won't know for sure until we get the certified values from the tax assessor later this month. Those typically come in to us at the end of July. But this is the information that we presented to council during the retreat in February and we expected at that time to have a modest decrease in property values. Go for it. We're, sorry, go for it after the mic gets here. Um, so with what everyone is hearing regarding property values, um, I mean, in our neighborhood, they're going through the roof. This meeting was held in February when you introduced this data. So what are y'all doing and when do you finalize what you expect to happen knowing that it's so volatile? Yeah, great question. We uh, get uh, input from the various 
uh, taxing districts, and and we're uh, city of Fort Worth resides in is it five counties? Five counties, and so we're getting reports from those assessors each month leading up to the certified values, which we get in July. So to answer your question, July 25th is when uh, you know basically is the deadline, and so we should receive those certified values either on July 25th or a few days after, within a few days of July 25th. And then we will know what the actual values are that we will be able to set our revenue projections on for fiscal 22. And so last point on this slide before we move on, you can see that 1% variance, meaning as, as you're looking at those changes, a 1% uh, variance equals about $5.6 million. So looking from 23 to 24, if everything remains equal, that 4% over 3% equals about $5.6 million. If we look at the same graph for sales tax revenue, you can see that in fiscal uh, 22, which again is the year we're preparing for, we, we don't see a forecasted decrease at all. In fact, we see the opposite. And in fact, when COVID first emerged and we were first preparing for how to handle it in the city, initial thoughts were sales tax is going to take a hit, a, a pretty significant hit. And it ended up being that sales tax wound up as a more stable revenue source for all intents and purposes. And you can see there in the 22 projection, we're actually expecting it to make a significant uh, increase over fiscal 21, and then sort of pick back up its normal growth rate after that of about 4%. And so going into uh, fiscal 21, you see that there was a modest increase, um, but again, not a decline in the year-to-year -year change, except going back to 2009, which was one of the Great Recession years. Before we move on, are there any other questions regarding either the property tax trend or the sales tax trend at this point? Okay. So some of the things from a budgeting perspective that the city must take into account, we talked about uh, earlier that, that capital kind of drives some of the operating expenses is what decisions have we made over the last year or several years in the past that will continue to have an impact in fiscal 22, a new impact, new expenditure coming online in fiscal 22. So that's one of the considerations that we have to take as we are developing the budget. And as you can see from the column on the far left, the 2022 column, the, the change, the, the new expenditure that's coming online in 2022 from decisions that we've made either in 21 or in a year before that is approximately $31.4 million. So if nothing else, $31.4 million of new expenditure is going to come online in fiscal 22 from decisions that were made in the past. And that's important because as we go back to those rising uh, property tax revenue numbers, part of that is going to help to cover this. And, and these are things, as you can see over on the left-hand side, you know, there's a, there, there's a variety of different things that are contributing to this. Um, and, and they're all listed there. Uh, and, and you can see there a variety of different operating and, and capital-related items. I, yes. So why do the current year when we lost the trade representative on state budget for uh, next term, we lost the representative? Is that what you're saying? Or yes. Yeah, so the so I don't believe any of these are directly attributable to carryover from COVID. Um, most of that direct impact 
was funded through either the CARES grant or the ARPA uh, American Relief Plan grant that's that's online now. Most of these are, are operating or capital decisions that were made that carry over. So for example, the, the one you pointed out, the pension, um, there, there was a, a, a vote that occurred and I'm now treading a little bit outside of my familiarity because this happened when I wasn't here. But essentially what had to happen in order to uh, stabilize our, our pension fund was that some additional contribution had to be made uh, part from the employees themselves and part from the city or the, the taxpayers. And it was a 60-40 split. So that's what you're seeing represented here is that 60% split that is part of the fiscal 22 and fiscal 23 budgets or, or plan to be part of fiscal 23. And then as you go down the list, each of those items is a different item that has an impact in fiscal 22. Essentially, yes. Split between uh, the taxpayers and the employees. The employees are paying 40% of that cost that you see there, or that contribution. City's paying 60%. And I, I assume there's more information about that online somewhere. Uh, yeah, so there, there's a whole lot of information about what led up to that and, and what the result of that is on the city's website in the re retirement area. So kind of the second half of that slide or that table is this operating fund forecast or operating forecast. And again, you can see going from, from left to right, starting in fiscal 22, if we have that additional 31.4 million of expenditure coming online, what is that look like with respect to what we are forecasting for operating revenues. And again, I want to I want to point out that this was our estimation at the time this was prepared, which was in February of 2021. So that's now 5 months 6 months ago almost. And so some of these have have changed, but this is the snapshot that was provided in February of 2021. And as you can see there, with the addition of those 31.4 million, we have an opening deficit of 26.7 million going into fiscal 22 that we have to figure out a way to close, right? So that's the challenge that we all face going into fiscal 22. We all meaning us on the budget team and the city management uh, team and all of the department heads and the departments working to produce the fiscal 22 budget, we've got this opening deficit of 26.7 million that we have to close. And so we'll talk more about that in a bit. The other, the other part of the budget is, is the capital budget. We just went over the operating budget. The capital budget is associated with our five-year capital improvement program. So we're currently in the 21 to 25 capital improvement program. When we adopt the 22 budget, we will go into the 22 to 26 capital improvement program. And so the, the five-year program is essentially a, a plan. It says here is all of the capital investment we're going to make over the next five years. And the fiscal 22 budget then is the capital budget for that first year to opt to implement the first year of that plan, okay? It's a little confusing, but it's a five-year program, one-year budget. And then it just rolls every year, a new five-year program, one-year budget, right? So our programming process for capital improvements. Again, we, we talked a little bit about some of this earlier, but we want to identify the city's capital infrastructure needs, and we want to do that using our comprehensive plan and Eric Flatiger is here from our planning division who oversees the development of the comprehensive plan. And so our comp plan is kind of the foundation for that. How does growth and development look over the next 20 years and what do we need to do from a capital investment perspective to ensure that that happens or to implement that, right? 
and then other strategic plans that, that the city has, master plans, uh, other kinds of, of strategic plans that would indicate how much capital investment we need to implement them. We have to forecast resource requirements. We, we can have great plans, but if we don't have resources to back them up or to implement them, they're not implementable, right? So that's a, an important consideration. We want to project the operating impact of those capital investments. We talked about that before. If you bring a new fire station online or a new library online, you have to staff those things. You have to pay ongoing maintenance for those facilities. We want to align the capital planning with our annual budget process. That's what we're talking about here. Those two things need to be done in, in concert with one another so that they're not out of joint. Increasing transparency of capital and operating spending is important. That's what part of what we're doing here, but we want and need for the residents and visitors of Fort Worth to understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish. We need your input and feedback. Uh, ultimately, you're helping in a major way to fund these things. So we owe you that information and that transparency. And then we want to continue to evaluate maintenance needs and new investment based on equity. And what that means is that we're looking, and, and Christina Brooks is not here, but Christina is our chief equity officer, and she's right now developing what's called the municipal equity plan that is uh, going to specifically look for how we are investing not only new capital investment, uh, but also capital maintenance uh, equitably across the city. So that's something specifically that's being done but that is one of our strategic priorities as well. And so capital planning and financing, this is just kind of a, gives you a, a, a quick and easy view of what the difference is between maintaining existing infrastructure and new infrastructure investment and how we fund those things. We talked earlier about this in a previous slide, but maintaining the existing infrastructure, like a, a road that already exists and it needs to have some kind of maintenance treatment. It has you know, cracking that needs to be sealed. It has sections that need to be completely replaced or refurbished, those kinds of things. We fund those with ongoing cash-like revenues like we talked about. The property tax component that we refer to as PAYGO, that's six and a half cents that we mentioned earlier. And then we have other things that go into uh, funding maintenance for existing infrastructure like revenue that we get on gas well leases and other things like that. On the other side, for new investment, most often we're using some kind of debt instrument, a, a bond, a note, something that has a long life, a long maturity that we're paying against annually, going way back to the expenditure slide. You, saw, you remember that debt service component that was about 7% of the total budget. That's what that is, going to repay those, those uh, issued uh, debt to invest in new infrastructure. We also use impact fees and park dedication fees and occasionally grants to do that as well. This is the same flow chart that we showed earlier. The only difference is that this is the proposed tax rate, property tax rate allocation distribution for fiscal 22, the upcoming fiscal year. It's exactly the same right now as it is in fiscal 21. And I'll say that we expect for it to be the same. De depending on the certified values that we get, there could be some drift in some of these numbers based on uh, state law that would require us to do that. But we expect for these to be the allocation distributions for fiscal 22. And again, uh, just kind of reiterating the fact that we're assuming, and this again is going back to the February report to city council, we're assuming that assessed property value uh, assumptions, or I'm sorry, we're assuming that assessed property values are going to modestly decline in 22 and then pick up their rate of growth. And again, we expect for this to be in actuality different when we get the certified values, but this was the assumption that was made going back to February. Bob, did you have a question? Yeah, I just have a question at the end. 
when you get to, oh, gotcha. We'll, yeah, we'll have plenty of time for questions. If you have one now, we'll be happy to take it. Okay. So if we're looking at, we mentioned using dead instruments for investing in new infrastructure. Um, part of how we prepare to do that is we look at what our uh, overall debt load looks like, and then we look at what our future capacity may be. Uh, and so that gives us an idea about how we can go back and put a bond package together, for example, in 2022. We're preparing right now a bond package that would go before the voters in, I believe it's May of 22. And so right now we believe that, we don't believe, we have calculated that there is approximately 600 million in debt capacity. And so we are preparing a $500 million bond package to take before the voters in May of 22. And, and that bond package will include all kinds of things, uh, road reconstruction, facility construction, new fire stations, those kinds of things, um, uh, uh, all, all kinds of different capital investments that uh, would be associated with a major bond program. And so that is being prepared right now. But again, the important part of this is that the 600 million capacity is there and the bond program is approximately 500 million. So we would preserve 100 million in capacity going forward. Our, I mentioned the five-year rolling capital improvement program. Uh, so when we get to the next year, it'll be the 22 to 26 program. It's broken down into several different components. You can see there, there's a general program. There's one for aviation, one for public events, stormwater and water. And each of those programs reflects projects um, that uh, you know, are, are individually appropriated. So you, you, you can go and look at the program on, online, currently the 21 to 25 program. When we adopt the 22 to 26 program, you'll be able to see that. But you can see the itemized appropriations project by project, program by program. Each program and project is funded by a variety of revenue sources. We talked earlier about debt instruments, bonds, notes. Some are funded by uh, grant revenue. Some are funded by uh, some of that PAYGO money that we talked about earlier. So there's a variety of funding sources there as well, which you will see if you uh, go through and, and look at the, the 21 to 25 program. And so this is the list that I talked about earlier, going back to the pay-as-you-go projects. You can see there, so again, this is cash funding for capital maintenance, right? So we've got a, a list of all of these things that are funded at a variety of levels. At the top, you've got street and bridge ma maintenance that is taking up the majority of that funding. And again, I want to point out that this comes from that six and a half cent uh, of the property tax rate that we talked about in a variety of places throughout the presentation. And then you can see there the, the other uh, projects that the PAYGO funding pays. You have traffic system maintenance, you have park and recreation maintenance, you have sidewalk maintenance, and all of these other things uh, to the tune um, in fiscal 21, anyway, of 48.4 million. So essentially, that 48.4 million represents six and a half cents of the property tax rate that we talked about. And I believe that that it, no, sorry. So what's next? We have the process for continuing to develop, to recommend, and then to. Uh, have outreach about the fiscal 22 budget. If you look here, the, the two recommendation dates that the city manager will bring the capital improvement program and the operating budget to city council are August 3rd and August 10th, respectively. So in less than a month, we'll be bringing both the CIP and the operating budget to city council for their consideration. Throughout August and September, we plan to have a variety of virtual town hall meetings and regular town hall meetings, and I believe that we have, or I know that we have a schedule of that posted online. Michelle, I don't know if we have handouts tonight that people can take with that schedule. 
So if you leave your email address, we can get you that scheduled. Um, we are also going to have city council budget work sessions, which happen every year. And then the uh, budget hearings, these are the public hearings that uh, get to the, we, where we have the tax rate and the budget um, public hearings in August and September. And then again, the anticipated budget adoption date is September the 21st. And so again, the fiscal year begins August, sorry, October the 1st. So if council adopts the budget on September 21st, approximately a week and a half later, we start the fiscal year with that adopted budget. So that's kind of the schedule uh, proceeding from tonight going forward. There, th this, you know, there are only, what, eight lines on there, but there, there are going to be a lot of opportunities to engage about the budget. We talked about the town hall meetings. There's, there's gonna be all kinds of ways to hear more information about the fiscal 22 budget when it is uh, recommended by the city manager to city council. That is the last slide. And so now we can open up the floor for questions and uh, get to as many of you as we can. So let me start out, let's start out with Bob and, and then we'll come down here. You, you got a microphone right behind you, unless you wanna come to this one, okay. My name is Willoughby. Okay, let's start off with this. Um, when you mentioned the uh, the bond, they're preparing the bonds now. They're, matter of fact, I've got probably a half an hour stuff. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to summarize real quick. Just catch a couple of things. One on the bond thing is, when we get it, like last time, we're a little late in the process. I want to get it before we get it in these little boxes laid out. How we got to vote on the bond. Last time, it had in one of the Boxes, it had 750,000 for playground equipment. That's good. But it also had six and a half million for the Rockwood Golf Course Clubhouse. That's bad. Now, either you take all or you take none. So we weren't involved on the first part, or that would never have been in the box. If you put the Rockwood Golf Course on its own, it would have failed. You put it in with playground equipment, it gets passed because we want the playground equipment. So we want to be involved in those boxes earlier that's going in those before they do. We'd like to. Okay, that's all I'm going to talk about that right now. But the main thing is, my understanding is, that the city is right now $2.7 billion in the red. Fort Worth is $2.7 billion in the red. There is an organization out of Illinois that's called Trip and Accounting. They survey 75 of the major cities, and Fort Worth got a D. And the woman on this was on the program, um, Let's Talk Fort Worth, local program here that internet show I work with too. Um, she explained a lot of this and laid it out really nicely. And Carrie, that hosts the show, called the city to confirm. Her word she got back was no comment. I did some investigating. I called the city manager's office. We do a program called Local Voter Education, fwdistrict5.com. You can get the information there at fwdistrict5.com. It's called Local Voter Education, Sunday nights, 8 to 9. I called the city. I called the manager off. I asked, can you send someone on to the program and see if this is true or not or talk about it or let's reach the public and share it. I don't put up false information. So I've got no response. So that's where I'm at right now on that. So what I'm really asking, I'm sorry not to cut you off. I'm just asking, can you get someone to come on our program July the 25th and take some questions and answer some questions? That's that. So in response to that, what I would say is, that is not specifically a budget-related question. So I'd be happy to talk with you about that. Let's carve out some time, and we can go over here and figure out how we're going to respond to that. But if you have a budget-related question, and you asked a, a bond program. Well, no, I thought that was the budget. Two point, well, are we two billion points, two point seven billion in the red? That would be budget, wouldn't it? No, that would be budget. Are we 2.7 billion in the red? Can we ask that here, or do we know? That's not, that's not asked here? Okay, then just simply, that's all I want to make a statement now. If y'all contact me in the next few days, see if you can come on someone on the 25th, because I got some people that can really ask. I'm not that smart. I got some smart people that can answer questions, okay? And I want you to answer them, and I want people to be able to hear it. And that's what I want. Thank sure. you. Sure. So if, if you'd like to stay, I'll be happy to talk with you about that. But okay. to answer your bond question, my understanding is that there is a whole public outreach and education process, yes, that is also part of the public house, uh, public uh, open house meetings that we talked about earlier. Uh -huh. But leading up to the election next May, 
there's a whole dialogue that's going to happen specifically related to the bond program, mm -hmm. separate and apart from the discussions related to the fiscal 22 budget. Okay, well, well and also that's something I'm asking too. We need someone, we've asked someone to come on our, the show to talk about the bond and redistricting. Uh, Mary from the city uh, referred us so, to community engagement. Community right. engagement is not responsible. So I'll, I'll be so happy to talk to you about all you of have, those things. Are you the yes. people that would handle that, redistricting and the bond? I'll be happy to talk to you about all of those well, things. Well, we want you yes. to come on the program and talk to you so you can tell everybody. That's what we want, not just sure. me. It's not I'm my not job to commit to that right now, but I'll be happy to Thank you kind very of much. figure Thank out you for how your we time can too. resolve okay. that. Yes. Thank you. You bet. Don, do you have a question? I have a bond question, but from a different standpoint. I was curious to know if our efforts to stabilize the pension fund had an impact on our bond rating. And the other part of that is, in today's financial environment, would it even matter with the, uh, uh, the shortage of uh, bonds for uh, uh, public consumption, basically? Yeah, and, and Reggie, feel free to come down and help answer this. I, I would say that uh, it, it matters, but when the bond rating agencies come in, they're, they're asking all kinds of questions. They have a range of different variables that they're factoring in when they ultimately deliver the, the rating for that particular year, for that particular issuance. Um, and so that, uh, you know, the pension, uh, any any outstanding liability is one of those factors, but there's a host of factors that they consider when they're making those decisions. And a lot of those are outside of the city's budget and or finances, period. They're the local economy, uh, those kinds of things, the, the relative income of the folks that are uh, living in and around the city. Those are factors as well, but there's a whole host of things that they consider. So our bond rating is double A plus from, is it is that Moody's? All three. Okay. So, so we're rated by three different agencies and we have the equivalent of, of double A, double A plus from all three of those, yeah. Any, any other questions that I can help answer this evening? Michelle, do we have any that have come in? I did want to clarify on the, the bond um, projects that are being proposed. Right now, the phase that we're in for the bond election is the public engagement phase. So this is where people let us know their thoughts on the bonds, things that they think were left off, things that they agree with, and that'll be happening at the open houses and then at district district meetings that are being scheduled with the new council members. So this is actually the phase in the bond election where people can provide their input um, because the projects are not actually part of a proposal that's going right. to be on the ballot yet. So Excellent this is the engagement. Yes, thank you for that. And so, so, so we are in that process right now. Um, and again, going back to the discussion about the open houses and the other uh, meetings that are taking place, those will all provide an opportunity to do that as well. Any other questions that I can help answer? Well, if not, um, we've certainly enjoyed spending some time together with you this evening. Again, we are going to, from tonight forward, uh, have several opportunities uh, to talk about the budget once it's recommended. And if you have other questions, uh, I've got some cards. I'll hand them to you. That If they come up between now and then, feel free to reach out and we'll get you some answers. Thank you all. Drive safely. Have a great evening.